Alareza Feruzja uses positional chess to create a withering kingside attack. In this game from the Super United Rapid and Blitz, his opponent is Konstantin Lupulescu. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, Feruzja was rated 2745 when this game was played. Lupulescu was rated 2572. Uh, Feruzja has white and uh, Lupulescu has black. Let's jump right in. C4, Feruzja begins with the English opening. E6, knight f3. So he's beginning with indirect play instead of e4, e5, and very concrete stuff. d5, g3. This is a, a ready formation. And d4. This prevents Ferugia from playing d4 himself, and black gains space. This also scores pretty well for black, actually. And uh, basically, you have a reversed Benoni, uh, where black, white is playing the side in the modern Benoni. Bishop to g2. Now knight to c6. You could also play c5 using the pawn to defend d4. Knight c6, d3, bishop to c5, all designed to protect the d4 pawn. Knight b to d2, knight to f6, and now knight to b3. That hits the bishop at c5. Black does not want to part with his dark squared bishop and give up the bishop pair. It also puts pressure on the d4 pawn. The bishop retreats to e7. And uh, white has to challenge this d4 pawn. If he doesn't, black can get a really nasty space advantage that suffocates white. So Feruzja immediately plays e3, which is a standard way of attacking this pawn in Benoni structures. And here, uh, black plays a good move. He plays the move bishop to b4 check. Um, I think that's an exclamation point move. The reason that's so strong is because the move bishop to d2, which is the move you would like to play, fails to the move d takes e3, and the bishop can't take the pawn because it's pinned. And after, say, bishop b4, black gets to take on f2 with check. And then when he takes the pawn, uh, black will take the bishop on b4, white's down a pawn, and has lost the right to castle. So that forces Feruzja to move the king to f1, and now he's going to have to find a way to develop the h1 rook. He's not worse, but that was a nice move from black. D E3, bishop takes E3. Black could play E5 here to try to fix the D4 square after D4 and some central exchanges. He'd have an equal position on the board, but instead he retreats the bishop back to E7. D4 gaining that space, castles and H3. You'd normally say white would be better in this position with a nice development space and so forth, uh, except for the rook at H1. That's what keeps this, what keeps this equal. He's got to find a way to, to activate it. A5, irritating the knight at B3. Now king to G1. We see what uh, uh, Feruzja is doing. He wants to play king to H2 and then develop uh, the rook from H1. A4, kicking the knight at D2. And now, excuse me, from B3 to D2. And now A3. Basically trying to give um, Alareza a bad choice. If he takes the pawn at A3, then he, obviously he would lose the pawn and then a2 would become vulnerable. But in the game, Alareza plays b3, and now black gets to put his knight on b4 or bishop on b4, and that's a good square for the black pieces. He chooses to place the knight at b4, now knight to e5. Not only is the knight going an aggressive square, but Alareza opens up the, dark, uh, the light squared bishop aiming at b7. Knight to d7 to challenge that well-placed knight. Knight d to f3 to back it up. And now c5, trying to undermine white's center. White has a nice central structure. Black needs to attack it. King to h2. And now finally, Feruzja is getting that rook from h1 out. Cd4, bishop takes d4. Knight to c5. We can see these knights are taking advantage of these vulnerable dark squares. And Alareza does not want to take that knight with the bishop. Uh, he would leave black with a much stronger dark squared bishop without any opposition. Uh, from white. So the bishop comes back to c3. Now he is threatening to take the knight on b4. Um, a good option for black here was knight to e4, counterattacking that bishop and allowing the knight at b4 to be defended by the bishop at e7. But he decides to go ahead and play queen to b6, defending that knight. And here Alareza makes a very interesting decision. He goes ahead and takes that knight, um, giving up the bishop pair and his dark squared bishop. But he does it for concrete reasons. He's going to generate strong play by doing this. After queen b4, he plays the queen to c2. He doesn't want the rook to gain a tempo against it. 
queen to c2, f6 to kick the knight out, and now knight to g4. Bishop to d7, rook a to d1, bishop to c6. Knight to d4. So now he's aiming at this bishop at c6. He's willing to trade off his light squared bishop. Uh, the knight also puts pressure on the e6 pawn. Um, white, black could take on g2, and after king g2, queen to b6, and uh, black's doing okay there, I think. But he retreats the queen back to b6. And now Alareza takes the bishop at c6 with his own bishop. He wants to keep this well-centralized knight, and he's willing to give up his bishop. After pawn takes, we can see that black's pawns are a little vulnerable. The a3 pawn is potentially vulnerable, the c6, the e6 pawns. They're all vulnerable, but it's not the end of the world yet for black. But what Alareza has done is made it so that after each move, black has to play more and more accurately. If, you know, if he makes one mistake, all of a sudden his position collapses. If he makes the right move, move he's fine. And now rook h to e1, aiming at that e6 pawn, and now e5. And we begin to see the pressure really mount. That knight jumps into the f5 square. And we can see uh, Firuzja is beginning to place his pieces near uh, Black's king. And if you put this in a computer, I think it says Black's okay, but again, it's dangerous. You'd rather have white here, for sure. He's also threatening to take the bishop uh, at e7. So rook to a7 to defend that bishop laterally. Now f4, piling on even more pressure. Uh, obviously you can't take because then knight takes e7 check. It would open up the line to the rook. Uh, as it turns out, the best move for black is the move e4, trying to close down those lines, using the knight at c5 to support that pawn at e4. But it's becoming harder and harder to make good moves. So instead he plays the knight to a6. Uh, I think the idea here may be to play the bishop to b4 and try to gain a tempo against that rook at e1. But Alareza takes on e5. Now the knight goes to b4, hitting the queen. The queen goes to e2, h5. And here, Alareza, computers show a move. Of course, this is a very fast uh, game, 25 minutes with 10 second uh, increment. Uh, but the computer show a really powerful shot from white. Uh, knight g to h6 check would have really cinched the deal. After pawn takes knight, queen h5, and black's position completely collapses, even up a piece. There's nothing he can do. The threats are just uh, too numerous. One possibility is after, say, queen f2, king h1, um, if rook f f7, knight h6, and everything's collapsing on the f7 square, and, and that, that would be it. Uh, but instead, he plays the knight to e3, still doing quite well. Pawn takes pawn, and now queen to h5. And we can see Alareza Ferruja's pieces, and this has been a slow process over the course of this game. Now they're hovering around black's king, uh, getting very dangerous. The bishop goes to c5, uh, knight to g4. Uh, I don't know if black saw any way to deal with this. He ends up uh, playing rook to f7, Queen goes to g6. Uh, he, if he takes the knight on f5, the knight to h6 check forks that rook and the king. Obviously, can't take the knight because it's pinned by the queen at g6. And after king h8, knight f5, and uh, he would have decisive um, material. So because of that, black plays the king to h8, but now rook to e5. Now, that isn't just grabbing a pawn. He's also introducing the rook into the attack. It's not about the material so much as about the rook can now join this very strong attacking formation. And now black takes the pawn at a2. Sort of what else? Um, obviously, the pawn is only a couple of squares away from queening. The problem is his king is in a great deal of danger. And here, uh, Fruzja plays knight takes g7, one of actually a few ways to win this position. And rook takes g7. And here, Alareza has a mate in four. Do you see it? I'll give you a second. That's right. Uh, the first move is rook to h5 check. If the rook blocks, just queen would take rook mate. King to g8 check. And now knight to h6 check. And that decides the game. Uh, king to h8 would be forced. In this game, uh, Lupulescu resigned. But after king h8, knight to f7 check, double check. 
which means he has to move the king. He can't capture the checking piece or interfere with its line of attack. King g8, rook to h8 is checkmate. So hope you enjoyed this game from Alareza, a very nice attacking display. See you again soon at Chess Dog. Goodbye.